Welcome back to One Comic Book A Day, where we're covering Superman number 45, Lois Lane, Superwoman. Now, we've already kind of had this story, except it turned out to be all a dream as Lois was uh, injured and in kind of a coma. Well, she was medically induced into a coma while Superman went to save her, and it turned out that her whole dream of having superpowers was a dream. But this is another time where also she never really has superpowers. Oh. This is a Hocus and Pocus story, really, more than it is Lois Lane actually gaining superpowers, which is something that happens often throughout the history of Superman. There's a really great moment in All-Star Superman where she becomes Superwoman, and she's been Superwoman more than once. Actually, we should probably keep count of that. This is two, but both these times aren't actually real. So they end up going to see Hocus and Pocus. If you don't remember who Hocus and Pocus are, or if you just started watching these videos, Hocus and Pocus are recurring characters, minor characters in Golden Age Superman who are joke characters. They're filled magicians who Superman led to believe that they have superpowers. They were already kind of thinking they had magical powers, but Superman really took advantage of that. And he keeps using them to solve crimes while using his superpowers to make them think they have magical powers, which feels very dangerous. And I keep saying that every time it brings up. This feels like something very dangerous for Superman to do to two simpletons and their pet rabbit, Merton? Something like that. So, Hocus, Doc is the name he goes by usually, uh, is the one with the superpowers. He tries to prove he has this by giving Lois Lane superpowers. And Clark has to go with this or else... His secret identity might be proven. I don't know. That's There's a very thin strand here for this plot's believability. And we're already dealing with a problem with believability here. Uh, what's really fascinating about the Hocus and Pocus story, this is like their fifth, maybe fourth uh, story. And in every story, Superman just kind of flings them at things. Like, he, he doesn't seem to care or have any remorse about using them like in the last story he literally just drags him over to the convention to help him solve a crime of course they don't see him he's moving so fast he's invisible but here clark is complaining about having to constantly do this for hocus and pocus like this is something put upon him and not something he consistently does himself He's had no problem with this until this story. It feels like an entire retcon to his belief of Hocus and Pocus and why he uses them. So he makes Lois think she has superpowers, and this seems incredibly dangerous for Lois, seeing that she doesn't have superpowers. Also, most of what he does is just kind of fling her across the city, like, whoosh, all the way across the city. That's, that's how he's showing her uh, she has superpowers, and... She kind of gets thrown into things a lot, which seeing that she isn't impervious should hurt. Uh, this goes on until a, a, a party is thrown in Lois' honor, and Clark decides to end this by making sure everybody she dances with gets accidentally hurt by her superpowers, that she decides to give up on them, and Doc takes them away. I don't know if that was the correct quotes, but none of this really happened which feels really sexist to Lois, even for the 1940s. But there's something here about how just kind of crazy the story is. And it's it's memorable compared to others. But still, Hocus and Pocus are not particularly very interesting characters, and it's just kind of annoying when they show up in a Superman comic. Okay, that is it from Superman number 45 in the first story, Lois Lane, Superwoman. This will not be the last time we see this. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notifications when new video is up. I do this Monday through Friday, but Fridays is Bat Friday where I cover a Batman story in either Detective Comics or Batman. And until next time, let's ponder the question, whatever did happen to the man of tomorrow? Where does Superman get off complaining about Hocus and Pocus when he created this monster? Okay, have a great day.